there was a hundred pound robot protected by tables, like school desks. In a school run by nuns. <laughs> hey, it looked like a pretty good fight, I thought. You know, getting a few flips in on him. I knew we were gonna get flipped at least once. Once, 15, whatever. <laughs> I mean, last year, my team started calling me first Miss Jake. In, in least of that match, I, uh, I did pretty good hitting him on that first one. Today, we're talking with Witch Doctor and Hydra. On this episode of Behind, Behind the, the Battle. Battle. We're on with Jake Ewart of Team Wayachi with Hydra. Hi, everyone. We're here with Andrea and Mike from Team Witch Doctor. Just to kind of get started, I want to know, Jake, can you tell me how you got into robotics? How I did, it was was from dad. My dad, Terry, he went to BattleBots back in 02. And he's seen it on TV and he's like, I mean, I could do that. So he, he put his engineering to, to good use there and he came back and he actually won the giant nut the very first year that he was out. So, I mean, that's how I got started, just coming to the shop. Dad does it, so now it's, it's just uh, ingrained in us, really. That's what we do now. That's super cool. And you guys aren't just working with just one robot. Team wayachi has got several under their belt. A lot of builders um, like Polly and Biteforce, they want to build different things all the time. They don't want to come back with the same thing over and over. So what we like to do is we come with different options. Plus, it gives us as brothers more options to drive. So I am doing Hydra and my brother Reese is doing Fusion. And that thing is... Uh, I'm actually pretty afraid of going up against that if I would have to. And then Sal is is coming back and it's, uh, I mean, it's kind of a legacy bot at this point. There is things we could do to, to make it better, but I think we're just gonna let her, you know, stay where she's at. Let's talk Hydra. Where did, where did Hydra come from? Hydra came from watching other flippers, um, including our own, you know, with Warrior and, and the Warrior Clan, not being able to hit the ceiling. So we decided we wanted to go away from pneumatics, go with the hydraulic form, and then we can hopefully hit the ceiling. And that was our goal through last season and this season is that we are trying to send 250 pounds up to the ceiling. Can you describe the difference between uh, the pneumatics and hydraulics? Pneumatics is, is squishy, right? The air can compress, it can move. Hydraulics usually can't. I mean, it's it's a solid force and it doesn't compress very much. So if you move the material, it's going to stay where it's at. We have to move about a monster can worth of fluid in a tenth of a second. So it's not a lot of fluid, um, but it, it does need to move fairly fast. So we need to have big valves in our hydraulic systems, like 120 gallon minute valves. So they're, they're pretty big, they're pretty bulky. I mean, just the hose alone is probably five pounds just to get it to the, the cylinder. So we there's a lot of weight in hydraulics. Our very first match, uh, they were actually surprised because they didn't know what was making the sound. And then when they replayed the video back, they actually seen when we flip, our bottom reaction force were hitting the ground and it was thumping and it was actually shaking the arena when it when it hit <laughs> so it's 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 pretty instantaneous and it's got a lot of you know power behind it right away i want to know how you guys both got started in robotics i'll go first <laughs> so i actually started building battle bots in high school i was really lucky that i went to a school that had a really big battle bots program back then there was a collegiate version, an educational version called BattleBots IQ. And it was kind of an unusual place to start building robots because I went to a Catholic all-girls school, <laughs> which is what you think about, you know, fighting robots. But I was really lucky about a quarter of the girls were involved. So it was a really big deal. You know, there were the baseball players and the debaters and the robot builders. So it was super normal thing to do. So you were, you were fighting robots in, in school. That's really awesome. Yeah, when I went to the orientation for my high school, um, in the chemistry lab, the students had taken all the tables and put them down on their side and created sort of, you know, pseudo battle box. And that was my first impression of the school. I saw these girls with controllers in their hands and a painted rusty robot that was moving. And, uh, you know, if they could do it, then I was about to do that as soon as I got into that school. There was a hundred pound robot protected by tables, like school desks. In a school run by nuns. <laughs> uh, my story is not as cool as, as that. Um, so when, when I was growing up, uh, BattleBots was on TV, you know, the uh, Comedy Central uh, days. You know, in the early 2000s, it went off air. And that was about the time I, I went to high school and kind of like forgot about it. You know, it was just something that I watched at, at night or whatever. Getting into college, uh, a friend of mine was like, hey, they have this robotics program. You want to go check it out? 
Um, so we, we walk into the meeting room and we see this like rusty, janky, like poorly welded thing on the floor. We're like, what is this? And the guy's like, oh yeah, this is a, a, a battle bot. You know, and he starts explaining the whole thing. And I'm like, like the TV show? And he's like, oh yeah, I'd like the TV show, but these are 120 pound robots. And I was, I was like, oh, uh, you know, my, my childhood like reared its head. And I'm like, and I was like, whoa, I got to do this. The following year, uh, you know, we were there first day of school. I was like, all right, you know, where's the robotics club? Like, who, who do we have to talk to to get involved in this? By any chance, was that BattleBots IQ uh, collegiate level some sort of iteration of Witch Doctor? And it was. It was the it was a you know 120 pound version of, of Witch Doctor basically, and that's that's where we came up with the the, the robot, the, the overall design of the robot, and also the name. Yeah, I'd say 2010 was the first Witch Doctor. Who's I guess that? this is our 10 year anniversary. I hadn't thought about that. <laughs> Happy Witch Doctor anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> Now it's time to talk about the fight with Hydra. No, no talk. <laughs> talk to me. What's going on? What happened? Oh, you tell me. It looked like a pretty good fight, I thought. You know, getting a few flips in on him. He started smoking like fairly early in the match. I mean, he did get that one good hit on my front end, but it's it's was made to, to get ripped off, really. There's only so much strength we can have into the frame of how we hold on the wedgelet. So we made the wedgelet just thin enough so that they would break off and not wreck the pin, the titanium pin that runs through it or the frame that's underneath. And then going around the match, I mean, a lot of times you'll see me just sitting underneath them. That's just waiting for me to get pumped back up so that I can flip again. Uh, if I had a pneumatic system, that wouldn't necessarily be a problem. Uh, but I'm going for unlimited flips, so I can have as many flips as I want instead of I can only have 10 good flips or something like that. And then you have flips like the very first one. Like you're, ta you're talking about wanting to touch the ceiling. That's because the pump is, is fully pumped up um, coming into that first hit. I mean, last year, my team started calling me first Miss Jake because I always used to miss that very first flip, right? And that's my most powerful one, my guaranteed most powerful one, and I always missed it. So coming into this year, my goal was I can't miss that first one. I got to, you know, get that trigger on properly this time. So, I mean, in at least of that match, I, uh, I did pretty good hitting him on that first one. What was kind of your strategy going into this Hydra fight? Um, well, to not get flipped the first... <laughs> Definitely part of the strategy, but it didn't work out that way. We watched all of Hydra's fights, obviously, from last year, you know, um, and their test videos, and the Wayachis post some stuff on, on Facebook, and their robot wasn't very quick last year, and, you know, turns out this year they switched to, like, a brushless drive uh, system. So the robot's way faster and way more maneuverable, and they definitely brought their A game for sure. I knew we were going to get flipped at least, at least once, you know, 15 times, once, 15, <laughs> whatever. It really just came down to uh, surviving those flips and then being able to get a couple of hits on Hydra somewhere, anywhere. You know, within the first 40 seconds of the match, our one of our two discs, the tooth shears off. And uh, basically that makes the weapon uh, out of balance. So she kept the weapon spinning, but because of the imbalance, basically the robot's shaking uh, violently. I couldn't drive uh, very well. So, so we're trying to recover from that and not really having a great strategy. You don't really have a strategy for what happens when your weapon breaks. Did you think Witch Doctor was gonna hold out? Yeah, that was the plan. Obviously plan A is to not get flipped and plan B is to survive the flips you do get. You mentioned that we see a lot of smoke from Witch Doctor, but nothing really quite stops working. Um, and all that smoke that you saw came out of our batteries. Mm. It got to the point where the shock was just so much for the lithium polymer batteries that they started smoking. So when batteries fail like that, it's not really a problem right away, but it's a it's a time bomb. You know, you're you're against the clock at that point. Um, well, the other problem with the battery smoking is it it looks really bad to the judges. You know, halfway through that whole thing, the uh, arena is practically filled with smoke. So the judges are looking at Witch Doctor. They're not looking at Hydra, who is not moving. And in the last 30 seconds of the match, Hydra barely moved at all. The batteries on fire looked worse than it actually was. You know, like Andreas, everything was working 100%, despite it just bellowing smoke out everywhere. It was a lot of smoke. I mean, the end of the match, it's uh, it's looking not great for me. You know, I'm not driving too much, but if you watch the full thing while they're actually looking at the whole time, you can see that 
I'm getting stuck on the floor and slower. And it was a big debacle up there with me yelling between me and the ref saying that I'm stuck on the floor and he's saying I can't move. And he couldn't see because of all the smoke. So, I mean, that's why it went the, the full distance as it was. And they weren't counting me up because they actually seen that I was controlling it. I was just getting stuck. Is that kind of where the battle of low ground gets a little dicey, like the con of low ground? <laughs> Definitely. That's, that's, if I'm getting stuck on the floor, I can't go where I want to. Um, so there's definitely a, a, a give and take. Nobody can get underneath me, but I can't move around the box, you know, willy nilly as I want to. So that's it's a little nerve wracking, though. I can imagine like it's it's one thing to be the the king of the low ground battle and have to worry about getting stuck. There, there's a lot of times where I'm just going to sit in a square and I'm just going to turn. I'm just going to turn, just keep the bot facing them. Um, if, I, if I get stuck, you know, in a particular square and I can't just get out of it, I'm not going to back up and try to run away. And I'm going to just keep the front end. And eventually the fight's going to have to come to me anyway. So, I mean, why move? What do you do when you're not battling bots? Right now, we're just running the shop. We have from meat processing plants to automotive industry to movie props. We, we kind of do a little bit of everything here. Can you tell me about what uh, movie props you've made? We've made some Saw stuff. There's definitely been some, yes, yes. There's definitely been some some props that we've uh, manufactured that have been in the Saw movies. Your family has a, a shop where all this stuff kind of comes together? Yeah, we, we just have a, a small manufacturing shop. We only have 10 employees, but through our contacts through BattleBots throughout the years, a lot of these guys come back to us now after you know meeting us at bots or whatever and then then they have us start c coming up with companies that they have made or or started up and then they come back to us to get more parts made too i mean looking at it overall i mean it's a good thing we went to battle bots because it's it is a big part of our company now where all these people have come from what do you guys do when you're not battling bots we spend a lot of time talking about robots and building robots uh, but personally, I like going to the theater a lot. I'm a big musical theater fan. I don't sing or dance or act, but I just love going to the theater and tormenting Mike with show tunes at home. Obviously, with the pandemic, I haven't been able to go to the theater in a long time. I actually watched two shows the week before they uh, closed down theaters, including Hamilton. So I had, a, I had a really good week before they closed it down to hold me over. One of my hobbies is uh... I have a drift car. It's a 1990 Nissan 240SX. I do some competitions, but mainly we just do open track events, travel around the state of Florida com competing and driving uh, with some friends of mine. And just kind of like a really another expensive, dumb hobby that it's kind of like battle bots, you know, you kind of almost you hit your car against other people a little bit. Over the quarantine, we actually bought an ambulance and built it out as an RV. And we actually drove two battle bots in our ambulance. So that's been a really, really big pandemic hobby <laughs> that we've had this year. Is it witch doctored out like on the outside? Is it, no, not it's yet, a- Not yet, but um, so there's, you know, we kind of want to keep it looking like an ambulance and I'm kind of worried about people thinking we're real witch doctors <laughs> if we have <laughs> a witch doctor rescue vehicle. Jake, it has been awesome talking to you. We cannot wait to see what you guys do the rest of the season and we'll talk to you soon. Yeah, we're looking forward to the rest of the season. I'll see you guys later. I wish you guys well, and I hope you stay safe, and we'll talk to you very soon. Thanks, Tyler. Thanks, Tyler. It's been a blast chatting. Join us next time for more exclusive interviews on the Hexbug YouTube channel, and make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss a second of the action. Thanks for watching.